Hi everybody and welcome back. Today we're gonna have a short video but it's gonna be very informative. This is something that I get asked all the time and it's how I schedule my dog walks as a dog walker. So I decided to just make a video about it to share with you guys. Now there are a million different ways to do this so I'm not saying that my way of doing it is the best. If you are a dog walker as well and you do something a little bit differently then please put that in the comment section so that we can all learn here. I'm just gonna go through the way that I scheduled my dog walks both as an independent dog walker but also as a dog walker for a company so you guys can take some of these tips if it's helpful for you. Most of your clients are going to be working a 9 to 5 job which means that they want their dog walks somewhere between 10 a.m. and around 3 p.m. A lot of your clients are also going to want a very specific time that they are picked up and dropped off and the problem with that is Oftentimes as dog walkers, we have a full schedule. We have dogs in different neighborhoods and it's often impossible to make every single client happy with that pick up and drop off time. Not only that, but there can be traffic when you're moving from house to house. There could be any kind of issue that happens, whether it's med medical or you just can't round up all of your dogs when you're in a dog park. Like there are so many different things that happen throughout the course of the day that make it nearly impossible for you to pick up and drop, drop off every single one of your clients when the client wants. It's because of all these things that I never ever give a specific guaranteed time that I'm gonna pick up and drop off the dog. So how I get around this is I give a time slot that the clients can then book their dog into. Now the dog walking company that I first started working for, they used three different time slots. The first one being 9 to 11 a.m. and then they had 11.30 to 1.30 I believe. And then after that they had 1.30 to 4 o'clock. And each of the clients they could then choose which which time slot they wanted their dog to be fit into and then if a dog walker say can't arrive there exactly at 9 a.m. the client wouldn't be frantically calling because they know that the dog walker is gonna come at some point in that time slot so it just leaves a little bit of extra room for if something is happening you don't have clients freaking out wondering exactly where you are of course there's always gonna be some clients who aren't satisfied with this they like control they like to know exactly when you're coming and going and for those people I would just politely tell them that I needed them to book into one of these times slots and then throughout the day I could send them a text message when I have more of an idea of what time I'm going to be arriving at their house and most of the times clients just don't understand what it takes in order to schedule your dogs um, in a day and they'll be really polite and nice about it if you just offer something like that as opposed to just telling them straight up no. Now when I was walking independently I found that three time slots was a little bit too hectic not to mention the fact that I didn't have as many clients as an independent dog walker as I had when I was working for a giant dog walker company so I actually did it um, as two time slots I had the morning and I had the afternoon um, same idea though where I would have I, I believe I started at around 10 a.m. and I would go until 1230 and then after that it would be 1 to 4 and then the clients could book in at any point in that I just found it was a lot less stressful I like to personally take my time with the dogs and make sure that everyone's settled and really give them a full day so I found that two time slots was a lot easier also it meant that if I had anyone on the day of of that like last minute had to book something in I had time in the morning and I had time in the afternoon then in order to be able to fit them in somewhere there are gonna be some clients who want walks in the evening and also on weekends I personally didn't do this so I don't have any tips regarding that but you could use any of these and just apply them to the evening as well or then of course if you're a dog walker and you do evening and weekends then let us know in the comment section how you do it so that we can learn from that now in terms of physically scheduling the walks I just use the Google Calendar app on my phone and the reason that I did this is my phone is always on me no matter where I am I have my phone so if I had to check something real quick I didn't have to make my way back home to look in a notebook or anything like that I just pulled out my phone and I had it right there also it's a free app it will send out notifications whether it's a half hour before the walk or a day before the walk just so that you're always staying up to date on what you have going on on that day Plus, the other thing that I really liked about it is you can send that event to your clients. You can just send it right to their email. They know what's going on, you know what's going on, and then everyone's just kept in the loop. The dog walking company that I was working for, so this was quite a large company, and they used a software called Leash Time. Now, I don't know all of the specifics about it because I didn't really use it as a as a scheduler, I used it as a dog walker. But the cool thing about this software is it's downloaded. You can have all of your dog walkers if you have multiple 
multiple dog walkers sign into their own account that they can see their schedule each, each day. You can keep all of the client's information and all of the dog's information there. And I believe you can actually do payments through this software. Um, I don't know how much it costs, but I'm assuming that it, that it does cost money. So if you are someone who's looking to expand, you might want to look into this. But if you're just an independent dog walker, it might be a little bit overkill at this point in your career, but that's totally up to you to figure out how you're gonna schedule things. Right, and that's all that I wanna say today about scheduling your dog walks. As I said, there is no right or wrong way to do this. This is just how I ended up doing it, both when I was dog walking for a big company and also working independently. So you can totally take these things and adjust them as you need, or take any of the tips of the people who leave comments in the comment section. And I highly encourage you dog walkers out there to leave some comments so that we can all see how everybody does it. Um, and thank you guys for joining me on this video. I really, really hope that it was helpful for you. If you haven't already, then please make sure that you subscribe to my channel because there's a lot of dog walking tips and just general dog information there. And I'll see you in the next video.